Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like this video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback and let's get started. So we do have this system 4x cubed plus 3x squared y plus y cubed is equal to 8 and 2x cubed minus 2x squared y plus xy squared is equal to 1. We're going to solve for x and y. Now, this is a system of equations in two variables, so we should be able to solve it by algebraic means. Nothing special, but there's something that makes this equation or system rather special. And that's the fact that if you look at the terms carefully, uh, all of them are cubic, right? So that's an important fact. So we're going to be using some substitution technique here, which uh, works with these kinds of equations. And that is replacing y with something like mx. Here, m is a constant, uh, so we're assuming that uh, y and x are proportional, so on and so forth. Awesome. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the replacements. Uh, in the first one, I should be getting 4x cubed plus 3x squared multiplied by y, which is mx, plus mx to the third power is equal to 8. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This should give me 4x cubed plus 3mx cubed plus m cubed x cubed is equal to 8. This is going to be one of my equations. And the second equation, we're going to do the same thing pretty much. Let's go ahead and do that. 2x cubed minus 2x squared multiplied by mx plus x multiplied by mx quantity squared. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit more. This should be 2mx cubed plus m squared x cubed is equal to 1. Now, what I'd like to do with these two equations is that I want to be able to solve them simultaneously, right? So I want to simplify this. There's a reason why we replace y with m of x, mx, I mean. And there's a second approach too, which I'm going to show you after this. I'm not going to work it out fully, but at least you'll have an idea. And you can definitely complete that. So I don't want to keep it too long. That's why I'm just going to show you this method fully. And then the second method, I'm going to show you the method, the way to do it. Okay, cool. So what am I going to do from here? Well, both equations have x cubed in them, so it's a common factor. So let's go ahead and factor out the x cubed from the first equation. Let's call this one the first and this one the second. So from the first equation, if you pull out the x cubed, you should be getting 4 plus 3m plus m cubed. That's equal to 8. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to divide these equations because what's going to happen is that they're both going to have the same factor, so I can simplify it if I divide side by side. That makes sense, right? I mean, if you divide 8 by 1, you'll get 8. x cubed cancels out. So when x cubed cancels out, we're going to be getting a nicer equation like this one. And let's go ahead and cross multiply. So we should be getting 4 plus 3m plus m cubed is equal to 16 minus 16m plus 8m squared. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to put everything on the same side so I can try to solve this equation as a cubic. I mean, it's still a cubic, but we have one unknown. Notice that the x disappears. We end up with m. So we should be getting m cubed minus 8m squared. Now, I have 3m. If I add 16m to it, that should be 19m. And then I have a constant 4 minus 16. That should be a negative 12. So this is equal to 0. Now, with this equation, if the roots are irrational, you know, we have to kind of, we can't really find it unless we use the cubic formula or some, some other way of factoring this. But if the roots are rational, we can try test some uh, candidates. For example, uh, what numbers divide negative 12 or 12? Uh, one, one is an option, two is an option, three, four, six, they're all options. But one of the very first thing you should always check with polynomials is is 1 or negative 1 in equation. And it's easily, it can be easily seen because if you look at the coefficients, look at that. If I add all the coefficients, I get 1 plus 19, which is 20, minus 20, 0. Bingo. That means m equals 1 is a solution. If the sum of the coefficients is 0, which is given by p of 1, right, in p of x. Uh, so we know one of the roots, which is cool because now we can do polynomial or synthetic division or long division, whatever. Or I can arrange these terms so that it's completely factorable. How am I going to do that? I'm going to manipulate this, okay? So here's how we go. I take the m cubed and I subtract some m squared from it, not 8m squared. Uh, I, I subtract something that would make 
m equals 1 a solution. Does that make sense? Okay, and that will be m squared. Why? Because if you factor out m squared, you should be getting m squared times m minus 1. So definitely, m minus 1 divides this polynomial, correct? So what I do is I kind of break it down into pieces uh, such that each piece is divisible by m minus 1. Okay, cool. I hope that makes sense. So, and then after you do this in uh, every step, you have to check the remaining pieces. Like, okay, I took out an m squared, so now I have negative 7m squared. I have to make the 19m fit this pattern so it should look like plus 7m. Because now, if you take out a negative 7m, you'll notice that this is divisible by m minus 1. Again, so our goal is to always make it divisible by m minus 1. Okay, cool. Now, what do I have left? I have 12m. And notice that it just nicely, everything falls into place because it should work, right? Obviously. So this is what we have. Now, what I'd like to do is for every piece, there is a way to factor it. So m squared multiplied by m minus 1 minus 7m seven, uh, seven times m minus 1 plus 12 times m minus 1. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Beautiful. Now, what I can do is I can pull out an m minus 1, which we knew that uh, as was a factor. So now the remaining pieces are going to be m squared minus 7m plus 12, and this whole thing is equal to 0. Now the good thing is the second factor is a quadratic, and it's factorable. How can I factor that? Well, you can just go ahead and write it as m minus 3 and m minus 4, as you can see here, because uh, we're looking for two numbers whose product is 12 and whose sum is negative 7. Those numbers are negative 3 and negative 4, so on and so forth. Okay, factoring trinomials, basically, right? Okay. Cool. So these are all my factors, which means I have all the m values. All right. They're all integers. Nice, beautiful. Let's proceed. Now, what does this mean? The first one means m equals 1. The second one means m equals 3. The third one means m equals 4. Beautiful. We found the m values, but we did not find the x, comma, y ordered pairs, right? But we know something that y and x are related through m. So we said that y is equal to m times x. So this means the first equation gives us, or the first solution, gives us y equals x. The second one gives us y equals 3x. And the third one gives us y equals 4x. So we basically have like three uh, sets of solutions here. Let's go ahead and uh, find the y values. Now, well, we haven't found x or y values, but at least we do know the relationship between x and y. And we could basically use any of these equations. It doesn't matter which one because it's always going to give you the same thing. Let's just use the first one. The first one seems uh, more friendly because that is kind of everything is positive. I don't know. Uh, so the first equation looks like 4x cubed plus 3x squared y plus y cubed. And the whole thing is equal to 8. Now what I'd like to do is in this equation, I'd like to replace y with x. Okay, let's do that. And, um, and this is going to be my big basically y equals x solutions. So if I do, I get 4x cubed. It's easy because you're only going to replace y with x. So that's going to give you 3x cubed plus x cubed is equal to 8. And this means 8x cubed is equal to 8. This means x cubed is equal to 1, which means x equals 1. And this also implies that y is equal to 1 because our initial assumption was y equals x. Beautiful. So 1 comma 1 is going to be one of the solutions. Beautiful. Let's do the second one. y equals 3x. Now, if y equals 3x, again, we're going to substitute in, uh, that into the equation. You're going to get 4x cubed plus 3x squared times 3x. I'm going to write it as 3x. And if I cube 3x, I should be getting 27x cubed. And the whole thing is equal to 8. Let's see what happens. This gives me 4x cubed plus 9x cubed plus 27x cubed is equal to 8. And this means uh, 13 plus 27, that should be a 40. 40 x cubed is equal to 8, which means x cubed is equal to 1 over 5. How do you find the x value from here? Well, you find it by cube rooting both sides. So x should be 1 over cube root of 5. You can rationalize denominator, multiply by cube root of 25, so on and so forth. No big deal. But y value is going to be 3 times the x value. So you can write the y as 3 over cube root of 5. So this is going to be your second ordered pair. Awesome. And our third one is going to have y equals 4x. So let's go ahead and write that down here. So y equals 4x, and I'm going to substitute that into the original equation, which is where? Here. Okay. So my original equation is 4x cubed plus 3x squared y 
plus y cubed is equal to 8. I'm going to replace y with 4x. So that should give me 4x cubed plus 3x squared times 4x plus 4x quantity cubed, which should give you 64x cubed. All right. So let's go ahead and simplify this. This should be 4x cubed plus 12x cubed plus 64x cubed is equal to 8. Again, the result is always 8. 4 plus 12 is 16. 16 plus 64 is 80. 80x cubed is equal to 8, which means x cubed is equal to 1 tenth. And if you cube root both sides, you should be getting x 1 over cube root of 10. Beautiful. And we know that y is equal to 4 times x. So if you multiply this expression by 4, then you basically just found, you find the y value. Okay, awesome. So these are the solutions. We have the 1 comma 1, 1 over cube root 5 comma, 3 over cube root 5, and 1 over cube root 10 comma, 4 over cube root 10. Those are going to be all the solutions. And that brings us to the end of this video. But before that, I said that I was going to show you the second method. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at that one. But I'm going to keep it short, promise. The second method, and let me, allow me to copy these equations again one more time, right? Let me write the system, and then I'm just going to show you the second. Now, the second method is a little different, but it, you kind of arrive at the same type of equation, but the first uh, step is kind of different. That's why I wanted to share with you. Okay, so this is the second method, and the second method involves some type of elimination. How do you eliminate? Well, we have a lot of um, terms here, but I think it would be a good idea if you eliminated the numbers because you don't really want to involve them. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the second equation and multiply by 8, okay? Since the result is going to equal 8, we're going to set these two equations equal to each other and boom, there from there we can go. But I just want to show you the first, uh, you know, few steps here without completely solving the problem because that's going to take too long. Okay, anyways, multiply the second one by 8, set it equal to the first equation, and you should be getting something like this. Now, what's so cool about it is that we got rid of the numbers and everything is x and y. But put everything on the same side, of course, that makes sense. 12x cubed, I have x squared y and x squared y, so they're like terms, and minus 19x squared y, does that look familiar? And then you should be getting plus 8xy squared, and then finally, you should be getting minus y cubed. Awesome. This equation should look familiar to you. If it doesn't, we have the same coefficients. But how do you find x and y here, right? One of the things that we're going to do here is divide both sides by y cubed. Because if you do that, if you do divide by y cubed, something interesting is going to happen. And let me tell you what that is. If you divide by y cubed, you're actually going to get something interesting because this is going to be 12 times x over y quantity cubed. This is going to be when the y cancels out, 19 times x over y quantity squared plus 8 times x over y minus 1 is equal to 0. And if you do the substitution, x over y is equal to u, just like before, you'll get the u values and then you can go back substitute. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.